All right, cutting plywood accurately. Uh, it's not that hard, and there's a few things to make your life a bit easier. I've made this little jig, which is just out of two pieces of scrap plywood. So it just has an end stop where the saw goes into, against here, and it has a cut that I made with the saw. It does two things. It tells me the exact cutting distance, so when I set up my straight edge, I look at my pencil line and then I line it up with the, where I want the cut to be. It also performs a secondary function because it's a surface between the saw and the cutting surface. It prevents all the edges from lifting up of the action of the saw plate, so it actually helps prevent splintering and lifting of the edges of the plywood. And basically all I've done to use it is I've drawn my pencil lines and then I've used the slot to line up against my pencil line making sure the cut's on the right side of the line and when I get ready to cut I just basically insert the saw against the uh, straight edge and off we go. Alright, so we've cut one of our 6mm pieces of plywood out, the same size and shape as one of our back door panels. And right now it's just square, it doesn't have the rounded corners or anything, so I'm just lining everything up here. Now if yours doesn't come installed with panels, you'll just need to get some a large roll of paper, a bit heavier paper, and you make templates. Cut the templates out of the paper first, and then do exactly what we're doing here, but using the paper instead of uh, the plastic door panel. And we're using six millimeter marine, quite, excuse me, marine grade plywood. So I'm just going to mark out all the places where I'm going to round the corners. centers of all our screws. Be pretty accurate with this because I was always going to be fiddling around with screws that don't line up. And also check where the holes are, either on your template, or the template is gonna be accurate because you're using a template. But these can be a bit iffy because they got extra large holes and they're pretty loose fit. And we don't wanna drill any larger holes in the wood than we need to. So try and make this thing as accurate as you can. So now we have everything marked out. We're gonna use a sander to round it off all, round it off all our corners and then drill the holes and then do a test fit. So we're just going to go over our surface lightly with the 320, touch up all the edges, flip it over and do the surface on the other side, cleaning up any areas where the drill went through and, and tore the wood a little bit. So here we go. <laughs> Sanded, drilled our panel, cut our panel, rounded off the corners. This is six millimeter marine grade plywood. Uh, there's 12 holes per door from our 2016 uh, 136 wheelbase high roof to our 2020 uh, 118 wheelbase low roof. The back doors, as far as the number of holes and the pattern seems to be the same but there is a pattern difference between each left and right door. So just be aware that you can't just pre-drill two panels and hope to fit them on both sides. So check the whole pattern on both doors. We've got our 1032 rim nut inserts in the door and we've got our 1032 stainless steel screws with some stainless steel mud flap washers. You do have to do a decent uh, clearance hole 
Otherwise, you're going to be fidgeting around with trying to get uh, holes lined up with the inserts, and you're going to have to peg out the holes. And you know, so just be prepared to drill slightly larger holes, clearance holes at the beginning, and make sure you have a decent looking, nice looking mud flat washer. And our dog participates in most of the stuff we do. So she just came over to give us a bit of a grunting hello and love ya kind of deal. So if you hear any kind of heavy grunting in the videos, it's our little dog. Alright, this is the last of the 12 screws. At this point, everything looks good. I think it's going to look pretty. Uh, we haven't finished the wood. We haven't varnished it and we haven't uh, stained it. And part of the reason for it is on this side, we are intending to put a fold down flap that will become like a part of a kitchen table or just a little ta mini tabletop. And we want to leave everything raw wood right now in case we have to glue and screw from behind. So all we're really doing right now is test fitting and pre-fitting everything and then we'll come up with the final design where we put the shelf and everything to it and then we'll do the finishing after everything is 100% completed. But this is the first panel in the new van installed, or at least let's just call it pre-fit. Hey guys, sorry it's still cold. I'm dressed up like a snowman. Anyway, at the uh, end of this section here, we're going to have made three panels. Two rear door panels out of six mil marine grade plywood, and one sliding side door panel also out of six mil uh, plywood, marine grade. I've got the template laid out here to do the sliding side door. This is the second of the two back doors. During that process, we're going to have used 12, 12, and 20 rib nuts, which is 12 per rear door and 20 for the sliding door. So all up, just in those three panels, we're actually going to use 44 rib nuts and 44 screws and 44 washers. The tools that we've used so far are pretty simple. Just a drill, an orbital sander, a jigsaw, and a circular saw, pencil, and a couple of clamps, and some sanding paper. Now, when you make these panels, you are going to tear out the back a little bit when you put your drill through. So what we're going to do is just take our orbital sander with some 320 grit paper. We're going to quickly smooth over the edges and we're going to quickly smooth over the back. But make sure that where the drill goes through is where the drill goes through is the back of your panel because if it does lift out the wood a little bit like you can see in some places, you want that to be on the back of your panel and it's kind of inevitable. All right, so we're getting ready to cut the uh, sliding door panel. I've already marked out all the holes. I got my straight edge here and then I got my little jig so it helps me get a clean cut. And what I've done is I've actually put this edge of the uh, saw on the line. So in other words, the cut is not gonna take away from the wood. So I basically just lined up that inner edge with the edge of my pencil mark for what I'm gonna cut. And I make sure I end up exactly where I wanna be. So when I get ready to do a cut with this jig set up, I just slide it out, just slide my saw in the groove, saw in the groove. Now I'm ready, the saw is up against the straight edge, and we're just going to push through and do the whole cut. Nice clean cut and right on my pencil lines. There's no guessing, there's no errors. So, take off our clamps. And you can see that we ended up with a nice clean cut without too much lifting or damage to the wood edge from the saw blade cut. 
and I'll set up my straight edge and I'll cut it the other way, the other way here and we'll be ready to drill sand and prepare this one for putting on the sliding door. Alright so we're putting the second rear door panel on here. It fits nicely, all the screws are going to fit. So again we're not going to stain or treat the wood yet until we finalize our design uh, in case we need to glue or screw so again really all we're doing right now is making the panels pre-fitting them making sure everything fits we'll get these three door panels made and then based on our design we might take them off and do a couple of modifications uh, we're definitely going to do one on this door where we're going to add a drop down breadboard slash cutting table kind of shelf so uh, we'll show you that when it comes that time all right hey guys it's getting towards the end of the afternoon the only one that's still got enthusiasm is our little helper here because it's cold but we've actually got the two back door panels on completely installed and we've got the sliding door panel installed uh, like I said, that was uh, um, 44 screws and 44 um, rib nuts just for that. Uh, we used one sheet of plywood, 6mm marine grade, for those three panels with just a few off cuts left over, but basically uh, there's not going to be any more usable uh, plywood out of that um, uh, previous piece as far as the build's concerned because they're all bigger panels. So now we've loaded up our second sheet of 6mm plywood and also like I said earlier we paid the extra few hundred dollars to get all the panels put on because A we knew based on what we've done with the 16 van that it was a pain in the butt to make paper templates. So we just paid the extra few hundred dollars to have all the panels on there was also, it turns out, some benefits that we didn't see. They installed some extra mounting brackets, some clip brackets, which are actually going to make it easier for us to make our templates and our siding. So we just removed this plastic -y, whatever it is, made of cheap siding from the uh, passenger side of the van. We've laid it out here on our full sheet of plywood. And if you notice, I've actually... I noticed that there was easily room to add another inch and make it look nicer so on this back towards the rear of the van where the rear doors are I'm actually going to add an inch to the original design because there's just room there and it's just going to look nicer so that's what these two pieces of tape were on they were telling me to add an inch so and if I'm careful again there might be slight differences between left and right so I don't just use one template to do your design take each one off and do it and again if you don't want to pay to have the panels on your van or whatever or you just bought one you're gonna to have to make a paper template that's what we did the first time we did it and how I plan to maximize my usage of the wood is I'm actually going to when I get the second one out I'm gonna do it something like that so that I still end up with half a piece of plywood left for one more panel and hope to get at least three panels out of this piece. So don't just go cutting crazy. Get your jigsaw and cut fairly tight so that you can actually maximize the use of this little piece and get your maximum amount you can out of the plywood. So just keep that in mind. Here we go. We're about to cut this up. 